Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's global daily COVID-19 show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism. It's my honor to convene this global conversation every single day for the last 101 days. That's right, this is our 101st episode, and it's the 101st day of lockdown in New York City. I'm so grateful to every one of our viewers and all our speakers and all our sponsors who've made this possible. Thank you for joining us. Please tag a friend. We're live right now on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. I want everybody, including our very special guest, to share this on all those platforms. You know someone who could benefit from this conversation. Today, career strategies for a post-COVID world. When the economy and the job market are down, new opportunities go up. Find out what you can do to position yourself to compete successfully in a post-COVID environment. Our guest is the awesome Jacqueline Dolly. Her company is called Be, Do, Have Results. And, or maybe Be, Do, Have, and Results. We'll find out when we talk to her. She's a work culture architect, a performance optimizer, a breakthrough navigator, and so much more. I've known her for almost 20 years and just been so amazed by how she has done and all she has done for her career as much as she has helped so many other people. Please stay tuned. She'll be with us in just a moment. Hi, everybody. It's Sri, and I am very grateful to all of you. I am coming off the high of our 100th episode, which took place last night. I want to remind you of some of our great speakers and what we did yesterday. This was our episode. We celebrated Juneteenth. As we said, we laughed, we cried. We had so many interesting people join us. This is just the first hour. We went for two and two hours and 45 minutes. So this is a card for just the first hour. We were joined by Professor Noli Way Brooks, uh, Noli Way Rooks, who, sorry, who is the W.E.B. Du Bois Professor at Cornell, Brandy Harden, a lawyer and board member of Justice Aid, the Reverend Kevin Kenny Irby, who is at Irby Man and is a pastor and teacher and journalist and also Jonathan Borstein, who watched 100 straight episodes. So we brought him on as a super fan. We were also joined by at mom of all capes, Amber, who is a fabulous speaker. She returned to talk to us as did Robert Anthony to share their thoughts and their views. We are so grateful to everyone who was here. We were also joined by our producers, Vandana Menon and Rose Horowitz. Vandana underscore Menon, on Twitter and Rose Horowitz 31 on Twitter. Folks, today we're going to talk about your career and careers of people around you. We have seen the devastation the coronavirus has caused in America, 40 million unemployed people. And we want to talk about how we can help at least some of them think about their careers, where they go, what happens next. Please tag a friend, someone somewhere in the world who is unsure about what happens next, please have them join us. Tag them, hit share, hit retweet on Twitter. I'm at Sri on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube, SriNet, and on LinkedIn. And you can find all our archives, 101 episodes, you can find right on our right on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash SriNet. So please do share. Let's thank our sponsors before we get started. We start with Art & Co. Get involved with the world's largest online art auction that's fundraising for COVID-19 victims, artandco.net, artandco.net. We're also grateful to Rutgers Global Entrepreneurship Experience.org. Get 20% off with the code SRI for their virtual team camp that has two separate one-week programs in July. You know someone who has a teenager and have them join or at least read about this, learn from top entrepreneurs and startup experts from Cognizant, Angie's List, Google, Facebook, among many other folks. They have fabulous speakers, plus me. Your, your teenager can skip my class, but certainly have them watch everyone else. We're also grateful to Muckrack Academy for the Fundamentals of Social Media, a free certification course that started this week. It's a 
two-hour Netflix-style show, so it's all in on demand, so you don't have to watch anything live if you don't want to. MRAC.co slash social, MRAC.co slash social. It's a free certification course, and people are posting their certificates and showing us that they have completed it. So we love the feedback that we've been getting, and we want to continue to hear from you. 4,000 people have registered for the course. So everyone, please tag a friend, someone in your life who would benefit from that. We also want to tell you that we have a very special uh, day. Tomorrow is Father's Day, and we are doing a special promotion to promote both our episodes or shows that we'll have tomorrow. Thank a father figure in your life, a grandfather, uncle, male role model, father, someone who you look up to, you want to remember. I'll be, rem I'll be saying hello to my dad, as you can see on the photo on the left. We'll read a message and your, we'll show your photograph. We had 25 moms honored for Mother's Day. Let's see if we can break that on Father's Day. On the right is our executive producer, Neil Parekh, with his late father, Prakash Parekh, who I knew very well. Just go to digimentors.link slash Father's Day. Digimentors.link slash Father's Day, or email me, sri at sri.net, if you didn't catch any of those links, and I will let you know. Tomorrow, we have two shows. Every Saturday, Sunday, we have two shows. We start with the New York Times read-along, where we read the print edition of the New York Times out loud. We've been doing that for five years. And tomorrow, look at this. We have Tom Jolly, the print editor of the New York Times, will be with us to read the print edition of the New York Times. It's going to be epic. And we know, because last year, Neil and I drove to Tom's house and in New Jersey and read the paper on his kitchen table with bagels with our friend Carla Baranakis, the former national copy chief of the New York Times. It was a life highlight. And today, I mean, tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Eastern to 10 o'clock or so, we'll be reading the print paper uh, online and you'll get to ask him questions. So please join us for that and follow at Tom Jolly. So that's at 8.30 in the morning. And then for the Father's Day positivity night that we always do on Sundays, positivity, we have two guests joining me. And the only reason they, I've been asking them to join me on the show for several, you know, for three months now, and they've refused, but they agreed to join me tomorrow because it's Father's Day. And who are these guests? My 17-year-old twins. We'll discuss today's America and the state of the planet from their point of view. They only agreed to do this because it was a, because it is a Father's Day gift to me. So everybody, please join us as we uh, have a very unusual show tomorrow evening from 9 p.m. onward. So with that, let me remind you of what we're doing right now. We are going to meet. We are going to meet our guest for this next hour. We're going to meet Jacqueline Dolly. One more thing I forgot to mention that we are going to be joined a little bit later by one or two of our guests from our spin-off show. That's right, we have a spin-off show uh, and we wanted to talk to them about something going on right now even as we speak. President Trump is having a rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma in a closed room with 19,000 people or so and uh, people aren't wearing masks and it's become a complete healthcare disaster and it was as predicted. And so we're gonna have uh, our, our hosts of our show, our spinoff show, come and join us. And why will they come and join us? Because the show is called She's On Call. And our two surgeons who host the show on Sundays from 11 to noon will be with us, Sujita Chandrasekhar and Marina Kurian. We are hoping to get one or both of them to join us a little later on. So stay tuned, they'll talk about what's happening in the news and they'll tell us about their exciting episode tomorrow with Dr. Nadia Hernandez and Dr. Lilun Lee. Dr. Lee just wrote a Washington Post editorial op-ed piece about what rubber bullets do to the human body. You will not want to miss that episode at 11 a.m. or the preview tonight with the doctors. And so without further ado, let me bring on stage to you here. Our guest is Jacqueline Dolly. She is with us here tonight, and we are very pleased to have her. So please welcome Jacqueline Dolly. Hi, Jacqueline. Hey, everybody. Hi, Shri. How Thank are you? Thank you for inviting me. I'm good. Thank you. I want to start by saying that uh, we the, the question I ask everybody, how are you? 
How's mm-hmm. your family? How are you mm-hmm. doing through this crisis? Okay, so I'm I'm fine so far. Um, physically fine. Um, my family also has has been doing well. I did have one distant relative who passed away as a result of of COVID, um, and she was a New York City school teacher. Um, but other than that, my family's fine. Uh, I have family that's both in the UK, Germany, here, um, the Caribbean, Canada, and so far everybody is, is is good. So I'm so thankful for that. Thank you for asking. Yeah, we want to always always check. And where are you right now? So I'm in Queens right now, um, in my my home office, which is really in my kitchen, just so that you know that. Right? So it's my, it's my home. fancy looking kitchen, by the way. Yeah, it's a fancy looking kitchen. You set it up very nice. Right, right. Thank you. So I'm, I'm here in Queens where I've been working ever since um, the COVID lockdown happened. And I've had to learn to pivot very quickly to be able to, A, serve my clients from through a digital platform, but also um, st- recovering from the impact of COVID. Um, m- a lot of my trainings were in-person delivery. And so it had quite a devastating impact initially on, on my work. And I've had to rethink, re-tinker, <laughs> renew and revitalize my business plan and also the way that I do business. So we will hear all about that. And we're just very grateful to have you with us here tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Have you had a chance to share this on your Facebook and Twitter and all of that? I, I, di- I did, and I'll be continuing to plug it also <laughs> afterwards as well. I think it's so cool that you have Dolly on tonight and Jolly tomorrow. So yes, oh, I didn't even Dolly. Know. Isn't that great? That is, that's true, it's the Dolly and Jolly show. That's the Dolly Dolly, Jolly show, yes. Yeah, there you go. That's the, these, are, these are our two guests. Dolly and Jolly, I didn't even I didn't even think of it, and you saw that, and that's pretty cool. So we are just very happy uh, tonight uh, to have you with us, and we want to talk about multiple things. But first, we want to make sure that everyone is following you on Twitter at Jacqueline Dolly. I also want to uh, make sure that we've got everything right on this banner that we've put up your website address as well, and right. uh, and uh, we want to to give everybody some context about you and your work. But before that, we want to tell everyone that we first uh, met when you were working at a very important organization 20 years ago. You were about three years old when we met. <laughs> and we were the youngest employee at this organization. And uh, we, I, I, we just had a great connection and we kept in touch. And you've had a fabulous career since. And uh, let, let's get some context. Tell us about your background, the work you do, all of that. And then we'll do our global tour of people checking in from all over. Tell us where you're watching from. We want to hear. All right. So I, I started out my career, actually, in the film and documentary um, sector. So I, I taught documentary filmmaking to young people and um, use it as an educational tool for them to reconnect with with learning. And that I, I actually did that for several years at the Educational Video Center where I was a co-director of documentary filmmaking. And then from there, I transitioned into communications, marketing, and PR, which I did for the bulk of my career. And that spanned everything from the entertainment world, um, also working for nonprofit organizations, working as a consultant. So I've been very lucky to be able to work with a, a, a great range of people, um, business sectors, and um, and some really and, and some really interesting people who have contributed to my growth. And the reason why I bring this up also is because one of the the key takeaways from this grand reset, this COVID reset that we're going through, is that it's going to be very unusual to have just one career in your lifetime. I think the days of that is long behind us. So many of us are going to have to um, reinvent ourselves multiple times over the span of our careers. And this is just another opportunity for us to do that. 
you know, people will see the, you know, what you're saying and hear what you're saying, but they won't necessarily believe that because it is so devastating at this moment. What do you right. say? Well, I would say to you this, I mean, th there are many devastating things that happen to us um, when we're making plans, right? There are, life happens anyway. So one thing I would share with people who feel that this is absolutely devastating is that for, for many people, including myself, devastation is not unusual. So um, I changed my career five years ago after going through and recovering from breast cancer. And um, I left my job at a time where everyone thought it was absolute madness for me to do that because I needed to be in another space that resonated with me where I thought I could best serve. And people development was it. And so I want to say to people who feel that this is the absolute worst that can happen, that is life. And we're always going to have to recover and restart multiple times. And I say that this is somebody who's had to do that several different times throughout my, my lifetime, including moving here to the United States from the UK after college. So it's something that we, we should embrace and start thinking about, yes, mourn what was lost, but then move forward, look forward and start looking for the opportunities and start to focus on, you know, what can I do next? What are the skill sets that I have? Where is the growth happening? And where am I going to be able to contribute once, once things start to even out? And that's certainly one of the things that we want to focus on is how do you adjust your career to what is happening right now and beyond. Let's do our global tour. We have folks watching from around the world. As you know, Jacqueline was in the comments just yesterday and here she is today. I know that we have so many folks who uh, have ideas for guests or want to be guests themselves. Just email us and let us know. We'd love to uh, get ideas for our guests and who, who should be on our show. So as I show you where people are watching from, uh, you can respond if you'd like in terms of sure. A memory or a meal you've eaten there or if you've been there or even if you've heard of the place we'll take that also so sure. uh, let's, let's go in here and jonathan borstein's watching for a 101st straight day from union square right love union square have lots of fond memories because the educational video center was actually housed not so far from there so i used to hang out there a lot yes welcome jonathan ashok is watching from mumbai Hi, Ashuk. Um, I have not been to India yet, but I am fortunate to have worked with a lot of smart people um, from India over the course of my life. And so it is one of the places where I would like to go at some point. Yeah, that happens, right? Where you meet up, <laughs> you, you have friends from a country and you think you know the country really well because of them. But what you have is a reflection of that country to their friends or your friendship. Right, right. Here's my father watching from Kerala, India. So I'll just come back to say hi, Acha. Happy early Father's Day. His, father, his Father's Day is tomorrow. His birthday was earlier this week. He always got oh. lost. Instead of getting two gifts, he got one bad gift always in the middle uh, when we were growing up. It was a necktie or socks or something. But we always love you, Acha, and great to uh, see you here. Uh, thank you, Ashok. Another and I'm thinking about fellow Gemini's. He's a Gemini like yeah, me, yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm happy to always meet Gemini's. And when's your birthday? Mine's the fourteenth. Okay, very nice. Happy belated birthday! You're yeah. attracting multiple Ashoks here. Here's another Ashok <laughs> from my dad's hometown in Kerala, India. And Renee Edelman's watching and says hi. And hi, Renee. Good morning in a uh, in, uh, in 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 Trivandrum. And Sujana, our doctor, who will be back later says, great topic, hi from New Jersey. Renee's watching from the right. Upper West Side. Yeah. Mark is watching from Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, I've driven through North Carolina. Uh, just to drive through, I've never stopped there, but it was beautiful what I saw. Faye Shapiro is watching from 34th Street in New York City. Yes, major shopping area, I love 34th Street. And one of my earliest jobs when I moved here was a holiday period at Macy's. So I know that area very well. Oh my God, that must have been some story, set of stories that you have, right? 
Yes, I do. <laughs> Linda is, says, good evening from Long Island. Hi, Long Island, great stomping ground. We're actually neighbors. I'm in Cambria Heights, so I can walk to Long Island, so. That's right, Hello. people don't realize that Queens and Long Island are all there right, right yes. next to each other. Uh, Charlie says, hi, Rose Harwood. Yeah, Rose is our producer, uh, one of our two producers. Hi, everyone. So proud of the response from all of you for our 100th episode yesterday, Life Highlight, hashtag Life Highlight, as Sri calls it. And Prashant says, hello. And uh, Rose reminds us that she and Vandana are live tweeting tonight. And uh, Linda says, um, uh, very sorry to hear of your loss. Even when it's a distant relative, it's a great sorrow. We also lost a distant relative too close to home. Right. And Ashok is a trainer and says, we trainers are facing a great challenge in the times that we are going through. Like you, he's a yeah. trainer. Uh, Rich Botello is with us. He's been here many, many nights, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And what do we do for overcoming these problems, Ashok? Stay tuned. She has some thoughts. And Christine calls it Grand Reset, writing down yes. writing that down to remember it with a hashtag, Grand Reset. And yes. Mark says, I had the pleasure of having Melissa uh, on, her, on, her, on his podcast. She moved from New York to Australia and is a career coach. And she also talked about not self-rejecting and also going with various opportunities. And there's her handle. She's moved to Australia from America. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rahadian says, good evening from Center Reach, Long Island. And uh, yeah. Mark says, there's a strong documentary community in Durham. We have the Full Frame Festival, which this year became more of a virtual event. AK says, hello. And uh, Mark says, shout out to my dad, Jim Lee. It's his birthday today. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. BambooTurtle.com. <laughs> And Sat says, hi from New York, great to be here. And Grand Reset, great term. Thank you. Yes. More comments coming in from folks. Please tag a friend as we talk about how you can work on your career. I want to show people your website. Uh, the address is results.com And talk about what they can find on your website. And then we'll talk about some of your tips for the career work. Right. So I work with with three, it's actually gonna be expanding. So through my three main groups are leaders who are onboarding, particularly leaders who are onboarding right now during the COVID situation. We forget that um, the, the, when you're new to a company, you need to be able to connect with people, build relationships. You also need to understand the nuances of how an organization works. And a lot of that is taken in through visual experiences and direct connection and contact with people. And now we have this remote situation. So anybody who is onboarding at this time and going through that acclimation process is gonna have an even more uphill battle to be able to settle in and to gain the credibility and respect and collaboration with their new team, um, which is difficult under no normal circumstances. I also work with mid-career people who feel stuck in a rut. And I am so sure that there are so many people right now who are perhaps getting ready to make a move with their careers and transition elsewhere who are now feeling stuck as a result of the high unemployment numbers. So I work with those people to either help them to develop skills and a different mindset so that they can not just survive, but thrive in the area that they're in right now, or figure out ways in which they can move out or move laterally to get into a completely different situation. And then there are the people who have um, been successful in their careers who have now plateaued and are looking for something, some heart-centered work or work that gets them excited and happy. Um, a lot of people are in jobs where you know, it's just not resonating with them anymore. And many of those are su successful people. So I work with them to do a complete 180 and to look for a new career path, which is going to be more in alignment with who they are now versus the person they used to be. 
Thank you. We want to keep hearing more about your website and what they can yeah. find there because we're there's, there's such an informative website. So as I just navigate here, please tell us what we're looking at and what sure, are some of the Sure. So there are the, as I said, with the mid-career professionals, um, people who are feeling stuck in their careers and are looking for a way forward. So I work with those. Um, I also work with leaders to optimize their leadership skills. And that's going to be a big thing for leaders right now who are now faced with completely new circumstances of leading remote teams, something that a lot of leaders are not used to. So how do you continue to engage and inspire and motivate people from a distance? Um, that's going to be something that a lot of leaders are looking for support in. Thank you. I, boy, the, you have all your clients look so, look, you are very photogenic people. So uh, <laughs> is that also one of the things that you offer? If I sign up with you, I'll end up looking like these gorgeous people? Not quite, not quite. These are, I'm, these are stock photos. So I didn't have the images of the people, but I had their testimonials. So okay. I'm all about transparency. So it's all right, good. that's great. And here, here we're seeing all, all the other things you're offering um, yes. as well. Um, yes. And uh, tell me why you picked this Maya Angelou quote. So to me, this is about people being able to stand out in their careers. So it's about finding things that you do well and, and rising, lifting the bar of excellence so that people cannot take their eyes off you. So it speaks to excellence. Yeah. Why don't you read it for us? Yes. Pursue the things you love doing and do them so well that people can't take their eyes off you. And that's really what a career is about. It's if we chase money, we often end up in careers that are not a good fit for us. But if we look for the things that we love to do and figure out how we can make money from that, so we go with the passion first, we can usually make a great living and also serve people well too in the process. And tell me about your certifications. What is that? Right, right. So I'm a certified Dale Carnegie trainer. Highly recommend Dale Carnegie to anyone here who is looking to develop exceptional relationship skills. And that's how I actually found Dale Carnegie myself is because I wanted to shore up my skills, my soft skills in that area. And I took the course originally in 2008 and I never left. <laughs> it was like I was bitten by the bug after that. And that was also my doorway into training and coaching as well. I'm also a certified trainer as well with Coach Training Alliance. And I'm a certified cultural intelligence trainer as well as an unconscious bias trainer. Okay. I just wanted to show you a business card I made once from a saying from a friend of mine. It mm -hmm. says we do something, we do some jobs for money and some for the honor and privilege of doing the work. If we get to do both, we're lucky. Right. And right. at Greg Norman on Twitter. And it's a photo uh, that I took of a business card I made with that saying. And that's on in front of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where I was the chief digital officer for, mm -hmm. uh, for three years. And I know you feel the same way too. I do, I do. Um, I feel that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. People development is my, it, it, re, it, it makes my heart sing. That's the easiest way that I can describe it. Um, being able to help people to either up level in their careers or helping them to solve problems or helping them to make a shift in their mindset or in their behavior is something that I feel very passionately about. And the reason why I feel that way is because in my career, I feel that if I had had the right people in place much earlier in my life, then um, my career path would have accelerated much faster than it did. So I'm huge on mentoring, particularly with young people, but also looking for ways to support um, professionals in their careers so that they can find their passion and live their purpose. Ashok says, skilling, reskilling, and upskilling are the need of the hour. He asked for your website, which I'm going to put right, right on the screen right now. 
BeDoHaveResults.com. Tell yeah. me about that name, BeDo. Right. What is what, right. what, what do you what right. do you? So that was coined by Zig Ziglar. So it refers to the the fact that most people, when they're pursuing a goal, they forget that they have to start becoming or being, starting with the mindset work first. So addressing their beliefs and also their confidence level around the goal that they've set. Then and only then when they're in the right mindset, are they able to shift the behaviors to align with the person that they're being. And that's the way that they get or have results. That is very helpful and an easy way to remember your work as well. So well done. Yes. I'm all about yes. branding. So that's great. Mark has put in a link to about how people can plan for retirement. There's an article about how a lot of people are putting off retirement plans because of the pandemic and it's impacting right. people's income. Uh, Adina says a great quote from before. And mm -hmm. Rick says he's reinventing himself as a cope with COVID netinar trainer. Wow. Netinar, I guess is a webinar, right? <laughs> Laid off as a family doctor due to COVID reducing patient visits by 80%. My ask of three, will you feature this blog? Cope with COVID revelations, learn, innovate, lead and thrive in addressing the injustice of inequity. And here's the URL. Everyone, please find Rick Botello on Twitter yeah. and on LinkedIn and follow him. And you can take a screenshot right now and find him. Obviously, he has a lot to share. And imagine being a physician and laid off uh, due to COVID-19. I'm so sorry that that's the situation. And thank you to Rick and everybody else who's been sharing their thoughts and posting all through this time. Uh, we are, uh, if you're just joined us, we are in the middle of our conversation with our 101st show guest. She's not our 101st guest because we have had so many guests on our shows. Let's show you what our numbers look like. In the first 100 shows, we had 201 guests. And that's, I am very proud of that number but even more proud that 124 have been women. And of course now 125 women guest speakers from 45 cities in 12 countries, 30 doctors and nurses, authors, CEOs, founders, teachers, professors, and more than a million viewers thanks to our partnership with scroll.in, one of India's leading news, information and entertainment analysis websites. Uh, if you would like to be a speaker or you'd like to sponsor us, please email us sri at sri.net, S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E dot -E net. We're going to continue to share our stories here and also learn from Jacqueline Dolly. Please follow her on Twitter and also look at her website, BeDoHaveResults.com. And I'm going to bring her back on here and continue our conversation. Please ask her questions about reinventing yourself, about preparing for the post-COVID world in job strategies, all of that, she's here to answer. We've got about half an hour with us, uh, with her, with us. And then we're going to meet our Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar, who's going to talk about what's happening with the Trump rally and what it means for the health care of this country. This isn't isolated to Tulsa, Oklahoma. This isn't isolated to the president's base. This isn't isolated to people who don't believe in science because everybody will be affected by this. We are seeing the impending and immediate disaster of what not believing in science does to an entire nation and maybe the world. We've seen that Brazil is now crossed a 100,000 uh, victims as well. And that's why we need to make sure that, and we've seen that the leader of Brazil is a kind of mini Donald Trump, and in some ways even worse if that's possible in terms of science and, uh, and, and facts. So let's now bring back our conversation with Jacqueline Dolly. We are very grateful to her for being with us tonight. Hi, Jacqueline. Thank Hi. you. We did a Hi. little break there and give you Thank a, you. Take Thank a you. deep breath. And uh, you're, you're doing so well and so many questions and comments coming in. Fantastic. And we're gonna bring, bring them to you. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. I know what it's like to lose my lose a job as, as that happened to me. And I know how devastating it is. You, 
Uh, it's not just how you feel, it's your family, it's concentric circles of people who are affected. You have less money to pay for you know, the dry cleaning or the grocery right. store, it all has an impact. How do you even try to get your mind around the fact that 40 million Americans have lost their jobs? I mean, I cannot do it. It is so hurtful to even think about it. Right, um, and that number isn't even the real number, Shri, because if you figure in the people that have been laid off and who are not applying for benefits, if you think about the 8 million plus um, illegal immigrants who are working, who have been working in the country. And you also start to think about um, the people who have dropped out of um, the, the job market altogether because they haven't been able to keep their skills fresh. Um, it's a much bigger number than 40 million, 40 plus million. So the numbers that we're dealing with are incomprehensible right now. And um, the, it's, it's going to have a major impact on our society, the way we do work, how companies are hiring people, and also, you know, how the, the government is going to have to rethink how, what work is in the future. And um, I think it was Andrew Yang, when he was running, was, was trying to introduce the, the conversation about the digital disruption, which has now been speeded up because of COVID, and thinking about what that's going to do with the job market and um, how that's going to change the very nature of what we consider to be, to be work. And what do we do with people when they're no longer working full time? How do we create purpose and value for them, right? So these are all questions that we're going to have to grapple with as we move further along into this, this what is a deep recession going into a depression. Now, in terms of the mindset issue, when you lose a job, it, 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 can, be, it can feel like losing um, a loved one. It's akin to the feelings that we have with divorce or um, death even, because our identities are so wrapped up with what we do. And when that is removed from us, we'll, we can be disoriented. Um, we lose networks. Oftentimes we lose friends, um, we lose contacts, and in our minds we lose value. So the first thing is, is to feel what you feel. Feel what you feel. And sit with that for a while, because it is a major loss for us, whether we want to believe that or not. And then the next thing that we need to start thinking about is doing an assessment, almost an audit of our skill sets. So it's just sitting down with paper and just start writing out what are the things that I am good at? What am I good at? And then start looking at and researching what the growth areas are in the job market and which of the skill sets that you have are transferable and where are the skill set gaps that you need to shore up in order to be a good fit for the emerging job market. So that, that's the very first thing to do. So the first thing is to just take, have patience with yourself because it is a major loss. And there's gonna be a lot of fear around that. And we have to be able to work through that fear. Now, the next thing is a lot of us can be paralyzed by the fear that we're feeling. And the worst thing that we can do in these circumstances is to do nothing. We have to be able to propel ourselves into action. And so that audit that I'm talking about is the easiest way to start moving yourself into action, is to start looking at your skill sets as assets and thinking about which of the assets, where are the assets, what are the assets that have lost value? And what are the assets where there's increasing value? And what do I need to add to my portfolio? And then you start the research mode and looking at what's happening in the job market, where are the skip, where are the areas of growth. So right now it's technology. 
So being tech savvy is going to be one of the skills or a set of skills that's going to be incredibly important for us moving on. So your ability to deal with data, to be data literate, um, your ability to deal with technology and any type of technology skills, marketing, coding, etc. All of those skills are going to be useful. So then we have to do a pivot and start thinking about how am I, what, what's the plan for me to shore up those skills if I'm not strong in those areas? And one of the ways actually is that the, the social media course that you actually have going right now on Muckrack is a, a fantastic resource. And there are so many free resources out there, perfect. So many free resources out there where we don't have to pay a lot of money to be able to skill up. And this is just one of them, the fundamentals of social media. I also saw on Muckrack that there was another free course um, which is focused on um, PR skills. So, and, and digital PR skills. So think about if you can marry the two of those together how much more valuable your profile will look to a prospective employer in the future, in the near future. So that's the first thing, do the audit of your skills. Look at where you are right now and look at where you want to be. And then think about how you're going to close that gap between the as is and the want to be. I like that, the as is and the want to be, that's a good way of looking at it. We have lots of Questions coming in, and Christine mm -hmm. love the commentary, which is nice. Linda says, if we have friends, family out of work due to COVID, uh, any advice on how we could help in some personal way? Right, right. So friends and fa I'm a big proponent in helping people who are willing to help themselves. So the first thing is just to show up and be supportive of your friends and your family who are, are feeling cast astray by all of this because they are not pro probably not in a good headspace to move forward. So it's about boosting their confidence and encouraging them. And they have to start taking the action first, though. So taking some, starting with an audit process is one way for them to show you that they're willing to do the work and take the action that's needed in order to propel themselves forward. Because we can't force people to do that. They have to be ready, willing, and able to step up. The second thing is to leverage your networks, leveraging networks, and there are so many different ways in which you can do that. So a huge thing that I'm a huge fan of all of these, these social media groups, both on LinkedIn as well as Facebook, and there are gazillion groups that are a match for every kind of interest that we have. And it's not just about joining these groups. It's also about being visible in the groups. And by that, I mean actually dialoguing with people, positive dialoguings and creating value and offering value to people before you start to ask for things. The more value that you can contribute, the more likely people are to be able, people are likely to step up and to help you. And it's about contributing, understanding that people may not reciprocate, but understand that somebody's going to notice and somebody's going to be willing to do something for you eventually. So be willing to give and show up and look for the groups that are a good fit with the area that you want to move into because we're some total of the social circles and groups that we belong to. So we need to know the people who are in the area that we want to move into. COVID is creating space for some people who have been inaccessible in the past. So I'm talking about senior level people. COVID has created space for them to be accessible and it's brilliant, it's amazing. So having dialogues, going onto LinkedIn, for example, and posting and responding to posts that are happening and having dialogues with people and then moving to ask them to have a virtual coffee hour with you 
or virtual cocktails. These are great way of building rapport and striking up new relationships. And that's something that I've been doing um, over the last couple of months and it works so well. And I've been able to connect with people who would, would probably have been a little bit more inaccessible before all of this happened. Right now, people are focused on helping others, but also they're dealing with their own adjustments and trying to figure out things as well as they adjust to the new reality. So meet people where they are and connect with them and talk about the things that they're interested in and add value to the conversation. I can guarantee that you're going to speed the networking in that way. It absolutely does work. And that's so helpful for people to know that you're able to think in, in those lines. So thank you so much. Let's look at some of the other comments coming in. We have one more uh, question Yes. From Linda, who says, any advice for those of us finding ourselves teleworking right. these days and likely to for some time to come anyways, we can stand out and be even more valuable to our teams. I have a thought, but I want you to go first. Right. So I, a, a lot of us are using platforms like WebEx and Zoom. And one way to get yourself to stand out especially when you have team meetings, is to be able to leverage all of those amazing tools that many of us are not using on these platforms in order to engage the people that we're working with. So we have, um, we have the chat function. We have other functions such as the whiteboard, for instance, where multiple people can add to it. We can brainstorm online and we can really engage people in these creative ways where it feels as if they're working with us in person. So start thinking about what you can do with the digital tools and platforms that you're working through in order to boost the engagement level. And that will definitely make you stand out. That's great. I also just want to remind folks, you were very kind to mention all these online groups where they can learn. And I run one called Sri's Advanced Social Media. It's a closed Facebook group and it's a great community, not because of me, but because of everyone who's there. We're about to be 10,000 people. And I'm very proud that there's very little noise and lots of signal, very useful stuff there. I learn from there every day. So either search for Sri's Advanced Social right on Facebook, or just go to that bit.ly link, bit.ly slash three social group, or always you can email me if you can't find any of the things that I'm talking about. So please do continue to take a look. If you are just joining us, this is episode 101 of my daily global show, and we are listening to career tips from Jacqueline Dolly, and uh, she is a career strategist, a, a person who helps folks who want to think about where they are in their careers now and where they're going and always moving forward, right? Like looking ahead and planning for it. And she says there are opportunities during COVID-19. And before, you know, a little later as we start winding up, I want you to kind of synthesize them for us in four right. or five things that people can uh, right. do, see, read, etc. cetera. Stefan says, uh, Jacqueline Dolly agreed 100%. It's always about passion and purpose in life and careers. And we all do so much work in life that we must be passionate about what we do. So wonderful to learn more about you and listen to your insight. That's awesome. Thank and you. Thank you, Stefan. And by the way, Stefan is an example of someone who spent 20 years at the New York Times as a photo editor and has been a visual and digital and social strategist with his Spin It social brand. And now he has a Spin It social hour a radio show a podcast here like this, where he interviews great photographers and he had one this morning. So everyone, please check out at Spin It Social Hour to find out more and to follow him on Twitter. And you will learn a lot about what it's like to, to have a vision of where you want your life to go and where you want to be. Uh, let's see more. Uh, we have a third Ashok. I told you there are lots of Ashok showing up. <laughs> here and this is the third one and uh bhagwati is also here and uh stefan says six of his staffers this is about trump are now infected we'll save this quote to uh when the doctor comes and uh, let's see who else is here uh joan says great advice regarding 
identifying skills and recognizing the value that we bring to the table. Always be your own marketer. You right. can't expect that other people recognize all that you're doing. You right. have to do it within reason, do it in a classy way, do it in a respectful way, but do not be shy. Do not count on other people remembering all the good things that you're doing. Simple, simple tips for that. When you go on LinkedIn and you ask for a recommendation, you have space to write them. Don't just say, give me a recommendation, please. Explain. Remember, we did this and you liked this. We did that and you liked that. Like, spell it out. We worked for three years and you said I was the best intern you ever had. Oh, that's right. I did say that. Right. I like that. So, so give them as many clues and cues to help you. And yes. also when you walk into your annual review with your boss, go in with documentation where you show her or him uh, the background of here's what, you, here's what we wanted me to do. Here's what I did. Here's what I knocked out of the park. Here are things I can improve. Here's what I'm going to continue to do for you. I'm going to show up every day and work really hard for you. And right. that's something that people need to hear. And you have to stand out in that manner as well. And there was a question earlier about how to stand out in all these Zoom calls and things you're doing all day with everybody else. Here's a tip. Uh, become a really good user of Zoom or WebEx. All these tools yes. are, so, are so complicated and no one knows how to use them properly. Just practice. And then you can be really good at sharing. When you when it comes for your turn to share a document, you hit share and it works. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is okay. Hold on, everybody. I'm going to share. Now, where's this document? Where's the tab? And then we watch your whole computer as we look at that. Instead, you're the professional who knows what to do. Also, you're the one who uses the chat room function when you're in Zoom or WebEx. There's always a chat room that no one's using. You go in there and say, okay, everyone, we're going to, as we're listening to these great comments, we're going to go into the chat room and annotate and improve the conversation. And that's what we're going to do. So become someone who stands out. That doesn't mean you stand out with a fabulous virtual background because sometimes they look idiotic. Sometimes they look great. You don't know. And also, if you are someone who moves your hands a lot, you cannot use a virtual background because it looks like you're floating in space. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but look what she did. This You cannot tell this is a kitchen. Look at that. This is called styling. Or you know, you it's look, like, looks like you've got a professional stylist to come right. in and fix your, fix your room. And that looks inviting and, this, and when warm and people want to listen to you right Shri. and this is particularly important for people there's going to be a lot more interviews right via video right connection now so one of the things to think about is this is about branding so how do you want people to think about you and remember you and how are you going to set up your background so that it's not distracting and it presents you in the best light so it's everything from thinking about your lighting thinking about the energy that you bring to the room, thinking about your sound. So this is about you carefully curating the perception of the other person. And quite honestly, you have way more control with video than you do with the in-person meeting. So use that to your advantage. I, I love that. Look at all these great comments coming in from yes. uh, so many different people. Skill up a new hashtag. Ashok says, one of your Ashoks say, uh, says, technologies like artificial intelligence and robotics are the most important yes. in such times. Uh, Rahadyan says, I suspect that many healthcare professionals will have to adapt to a world in which telemedicine will yes. be used more and more. Absolutely. Joe, great advice in identifying skills and recognizing the value we bring. We talked about that already. Uh, Mark says, I remember when there was one job a person would have for their whole life. Or at least that's the way that our grandpa parents put it. I think kids like Sri's age will have multiple, multiple jobs, even as many as 30 in their career. Right. That's scary, right. uh, to think about, but uh, he. Not, he not really. Embrace it because, you know, I'm a Gen Xer, Sri. I know I, know I started when I was three years old, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm a Gen Xer and I, I have had multiple career incarnations and it's become the, it's become the norm for us. So it's not something that we should be afraid of. What it tells us is that we have to be lifelong learners and constantly look for ways to upskill and to add to our skill portfolio because there are skills which are going to become obsolete because of technology. So we have to think about, you know, what's still valuable 
And how do I add more to my portfolio so that I stay current and relevant? I did want to also mention that this is an amazing time for innovation and also entrepreneurship. We're in the gig economy. COVID has pushed us completely into it, 100%. So this is a time where you can start to think creatively about serving your clients. So I'm reminded of a, an amazing story about a marketing and um, PR photographer who worked for an advertising company who lost all of his work when COVID came in. And he started doing something called COVID quarantine, quarantine portraits. And he would use a drone <laughs> to take pictures of people who were locked in. And then there was this increasing demand for photographs from this photographer. So he absolutely reinvented himself and rethought his business of what he was doing and made it relevant to the times. It's that type of creative thinking that's going to help to move us through this. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate or complex idea. Just start thinking about how you can look at what you do and use it in a completely different way in order to serve people and deliver what they need most right now. Thank you. We have just a couple of minutes left. Uh, here, here is Christine says, great advice, question mark. And then she says, great advice, triple exclamation mark. <laughs> and that's awesome. And Don says, live from New York. And we have so many other comments coming in from all over. Uh, uh, Rick calls you Dolly, uh, but that's Jacqueline <laughs> Dolly. We were right. right. I'm sure you've been called Dolly uh, by accident in the past as well. What inspired you to be an agile, dynamic, adaptive learner? Okay. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I graduated into a recession economy. This was in the UK. And right after college, there were no jobs. And when I, my parents moved here when I was in my first year of college and I swore I was not gonna move to the United States. But when I left school, there was just absolutely nothing for me. And so I decided that this would be the best course of action. So because of that move, that emboldened me to want to reinvent myself multiple times for different, for my changing areas of interest, because we never, the person I was when I was 21 years old, that's not who I am today, right? So our interests change. The things that, that make us um, happy and feel purposeful, that changes. So we should be embracing that ability. It used to, it used to be something that could be a negative on our resumes. Well, the, this generation, the Gen, Gen Zs, they're doing it constantly. So a lot of them are changing jobs every year, right? And it's how they advance their, their careers quickly and how they move, learn more from a, a wider range of people. And it's to their benefit. So for those of us who come from another generation, um, we need to shift the way that we think about it as a negative and start embracing it as an opportunity because it really is. And it and it's something that people don't always understand. Manuel says hello from Spain and gives you three hays, I think. And, Hi, Manuel. <laughs> hey, and, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you been to Spain? I have not, no. All right. Well, I've been to plenty of other places, but Spain has not been one of them. I thought everyone in England was like, just like to spend no. one week in Spain every <laughs> year. One person from the UK has never been to Spain. Right, it certainly sounds like that. And this is why I also can't understand why the British tore up their passport that could allow them to go and work in 27 countries. Oh, we and don't even want to get into Brexit. That's no, a minefield. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to go there. <laughs> Before we let you go, you've been so generous and so kind with your time today. Give us three, four things to okay. think about okay. as we prepare. And here's a wonderful comment from Sheila who says, thank you for helping love their Mondays as they are thinking about what happens on Monday. I think in this new age, we need everything that can help us with our Monday. So uh, Jacqueline's now gonna give us her three, four best tips. And folks, write these down, tweet them out. She's at Jacqueline Dolly. You see her website, point people there, help them 
uh, help themselves by going and connecting with Jacqueline. She offers a call, right? You will take yes. a call with anybody. People Absolutely. Call so free, right I do a free consultation with you so that we can assess what your needs are. And I also have an infographic of what I'm going to share with you now. So I'm happy to share that with you. Just sign up to subscribe to, on my website and I'm happy to share that. So some key takeaways from this. The first one is to skill up. Do an audit of your skill sets and look at the difference between where you are now and where you want to be and figure out what are the skills that are going to help me close that gap between the as is and the want to be. The skills that we should be looking at and shoring up are technology skills. So anything to do with data, machine learning, AI, coding, even digital marketing, um, social media mastery. These are all the skills that you want to add to your portfolio now while you have the time to do it, the downtime to do it. So skilling up is critical. Number two, increase your knowledge base. So this is about reading. So staying current with what's going on in the, the, the business sector area of interest for your next career move. So you want to know who the key influences, influences are. You want to follow them online. You want to stay current, dialogue with them as much as possible, especially on things like Twitter and also LinkedIn. You have that opportunity to dialogue with people and read, 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 read as much as you can. Look at YouTube videos, TED Talks, et cetera, but shore up your knowledge base. That's one way for you to stand out. Number three, expand your circle of influence. There is no excuse now for us not to embrace networking because it's so easy. We can do it from our living rooms right now and people are way more accessible to us. So we want to join as groups of, of, of interest to us on LinkedIn as well as Facebook and then participate. You want to start showing up the way that you want people to perceive you and contribute value. Be visible. So th again, this is about, you know, contributing, adding things to the conversation, sharing resources, helping people if they have questions. So be visible. If you're just joining a group to sit on the sidelines, it is a wasted opportunity. And be bold. You want to ask people to have a virtual coffee with you. You know, people are more willing to do that right now. So take a chance, take the risk to reach out to people in that way. Um, some people will say no, but a lot more people will say yes, especially if you've been contributing value to them for a while. And then the last thing, the three R's, they are renew. You want to renew ties with people. So COVID, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I have been renewing ties with so many people from my past as a result of the shared experience that we're having. So renew those relationships that can be of value to you. So start to contribute and stay up with those people and respond to them and strengthen those ties. The next one is to reinvent. Do not be afraid to reinvent yourself. This is the perfect time to do it. This is about your branding, doing a brand audit, looking at how you're showing up on social media and how you're participating and what you're posting, etc. So think about how can you re reinvent yourself to be the person that you want to be in your next career move. And then last but not least, rebuild. This is about rebuilding your skills, rebuilding networks. Um, we should always be feeding and contributing to relationship building with our networks. A lot of us make the mistake of not using our networks until we need them. 
use the network and build the network before you need it because people are quite cynical so if you only reach out to them when you're down and when you need something chances are they are not going to respond to you and always 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 think about ways in which you can feed the relationship first before you take before you ask for something so feed the relationship Thank wow, you. I feel like I just went to school with Jacqueline Dolly. <laughs> she is terrific, as you all just heard. Thank you for sharing that. You're so generous. Everyone, please follow her, Jacqueline Dolly. We do have results.com, and we're very grateful to you. Uh, thank you for being here with us on a Saturday thank night. You, and we hope you'll come back and talk to us again. I know you'll be in the comments, and you'll oh, answer yes. some of them later. <laughs> As you're, you're talking to us here now, you were not able to do that. But thank you, and good luck with everything, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Shree. All right. Our, we're very grateful to Jacqueline, but please stay tuned. We now have uh, folks who are going to join us, two doctors who have been frequent guests on the show. They're both going to be here to talk about what's happening on their show tomorrow and also this Trump rally that's taking place, which to me is a healthcare disaster in real time that we are seeing unfold. And I'm gonna bring them on to talk about that. And don't forget, through this crisis, one of the things we've been doing for the last several weeks, Kimberly Crenshaw, the great professor who coined the term intersectionality and who runs the uh, African American Policy Forum has said to me on one of my shows said, Sri, say their names. And we're gonna say the names of the men and women who've been killed in senseless violence. And we will talk about that a little later before we close the show. But now just for a truncated uh, visit, please uh, join us as we welcome onto the show, Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar, hello. Hi. And Dr. Nice. Marina Kurian, hi. How are you guys? Great to see you both. Uh, thank you for being here. It's a Saturday night. Uh, this is how the world has changed that all three of us are able to be on here for a little bit and, and connect. Uh, let's first talk about the news of the day, maybe the news of the year, depending on how it all goes, and then talk about your show that both of you debuted last week. Uh, let me start with Marina. Tell us what you've been thinking about as we see these extraordinary pictures of President Trump's rally in the middle of a pandemic in a city that hit the highest number of new cases in the entire three months was yesterday, so today's a perfect day to have an indoor closed rally. You know, um, apparently some members of his team for the rally had already been tested positive, positive. and um, I think if everyone is at that rally and they're not wearing masks, then they're really putting themselves at risk, and I, I think it is a healthcare issue. I am so proud as a New Yorker, I, I would like to say I'm uh, almost lifelong in New Yorker. Four years I wasn't here, but until then, I mean, for the past, okay, many, many years, I have been a, a New Yorker. And what we've done in this city, in, in all the boroughs, and in terms of getting wearing masks and, and flattening the curve and decreasing it, and Dr., um, Governor Cuomo announced that we have the lowest rate in the country right now. And I think he said that yesterday. So for us to see what other people are doing, if they're not pa practicing social distancing, if they're not wearing masks, they're putting themselves, and more importantly, they're putting everyone they become in contact with once they go home at risk. And that is really the issue. That's a big problem, I think. And that is not, you know, that's not a mitigation of the risk. That is an amplification of the risk. And I think that's a, a tremendous issue. And it should have been addressed by leadership. Um, so that's, that's what I have to say. All right, let's go to Sujana. Yeah, I mean, I have to echo Marina. I have to echo every physician, every nurse, every public health expert who's just banging their head against the wall today. Um, you know, the guidance from the healthcare leadership was please don't have this rally. And that was not listened to. There are probably about 10 or 11,000 people in a 19,000 seat arena, um, but they're not distanced. So you could potentially actually distance 
with about half the audience there, except for they're not. They're crowded uh, into the lower areas, so they're jam-packed. Um, they handed masks out to people as they entered. And, you know, the mask and healthcare as a political symbol is very strange to me. And I think it's very strange to Marina. I think it's very strange to all of us. You know, we take care of you when you're sick. We don't care what you've done or what you believe in or anything. We just care that you're a person and we will take care of you. And I think we all believe in medicine, that medicine is just medicine and it's science and it's the best science that we have access to at that moment. So people were handed masks and they immediately threw them in the garbage. And Marina's right, six of, of President Trump's staffers apparently tested positive just before the events unfolded this evening um, and they were quarantined. But we know that there's asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic spread of disease. So you can be spreading the disease without knowing you have it. Um, and we don't have widespread testing. So it's not like the people attending were tested. So I, you know, Atul Gawande, who's a great medical thinker, uh, was talking earlier today and, and really hoping that the percentages that get sick from here are very low, as are we all. Uh, because when you when you have a, a, a place like this that's indoors, where most of the people are not wearing masks, and they're shouting, you know, they're it's exciting, right? They're at some place they want to be. They're shouting. It's a rally. It's a rally. <laughs> or if you just the fuck sprays a plume of potential virus into the air that goes at least six feet, if not more. So by not wearing a mask, they're not protecting themselves, they're not protecting others in the room. And, and people have said, oh, what's the difference between this and the outside rallies, Black Lives Matter? Outside, outside versus inside, wearing masks versus not wearing masks doing your best to maintain social distancing as best you can, but outside is very different than crash, you know, crushing together inside. Um, and the lack of masks is just, just plain dumb. Um, when we think about air movement of being outside, right? There's air, it's moving. It's moving all these particles around, but it's still in a more open, environment when we look at an indoor space and how air is moved it's completely different and and perhaps to the engineers who are listening to us it's they're like yeah the air is going to go here that's going to go there i don't know but i just feel like if i'm in a closed space the air is going to be like here like just like this to me you know and i think that's the issue that people are not looking at what is the health risk and quite honestly um this this is in New York, it's a disaster is what I wanted to say. This is a disaster. But in New York, currently, we are at less than 1% positive rate for COVID-19. That is fantastic. This is what everyone said. Oh, these high rates of COVID, it's all fake news. You know, you have to test everybody, then you'll actually get a denominator. It's going to be less than 1%. Okay, we're there. Do you think? Arkansas? Do you think Arizona? Do you think uh, parts of Texas and parts of Florida are there right now? I don't think they're there. I mean, I think this is part of the issue that if you you practice the tenants, like today I went for a walk. It was like close to 80 degrees out. I had a mask on. It was sweaty. It was a hot mess. I felt like the mask was a mess. I felt like my face was a mess, but I wore it because I was walking and even though there weren't that many people out, I knew at some point I'd be passing people and I decided to wear it. It's uncomfortable, but it's something that we can do to change our risk. And we certainly, if you want a Petri dish, look at New York City, look what we did. Look where we were just two months ago and look where we are now. I mean, it's quite clear that wearing a mask and um, practicing social distancing really does benefit. And, and not being more than 10 people in an indoor space. This is how many thousand did you say, Sujana? It's like- uh, it's, It looks like it's 10 or 11,000 in a 19,000 space. Even if it's 1,000 packed together, it's a problem. And I think, um, I think, you know, Americans 
are really good and generous and always think of the other person. I have always felt that about us. And the reason you're wearing a mask these days is to prevent inadvertently infecting somebody else. And, and that's it. That's why you're wearing the mask. And I think we are we all have enough goodness in ourselves to do this one small, tiny little thing that will bring all of this infection down so our kids can get back to school and we can get back to work and we can go eat at a restaurant like a normal person and we can have a drink at a bar, but we can't do it unless we all do this tiny little thing for a little while longer. And this is the states where they're not asking or forcing people to wear masks and these kind of events that where the leadership has fallen and people feel very conflicted about, you know, about the advice that they're getting. Um, th these things are going to make that first wave that we're still not over last longer and longer. All right. We, we're so grateful to you both for joining us on Saturday night to share these insights. Let's look at a couple of these quick comments. Rahadian says, I sadly envision that given the 14 day incubation period, there'll be a surge of cases around the country. Linda says, not just putting themselves at risk, but possibly transferring the virus to other people they later interact with. And this is what I say to some of my democratic friends were like, great, these are all just Trump supporters and they will only they'll be affected. This is gonna affect the entire country and no one, you shouldn't wish bad health mm -hmm. on anyone. Right, right. But, but I don't think of that as bad luck. You yeah. never want to wish ill on somebody else because that's karma, man. It comes back and bites you. No well, the three of us come from a culture that understands karma, so we know that. <laughs> Rahadian says, good evening, doctors. I look forward to the second installment of your show. She's on call tomorrow morning. So let's use this as an excuse to talk about She's on Call. This is the show that will be airing tomorrow. We're very excited about it. Uh, so. Uh, let's uh, hear from you, Sujana. Tell us about what the show is about and what tomorrow is about and what's going to happen. Well, we're really excited about the show. It's our second one. Last uh, last week was our premiere, and we couldn't believe it. Over 5,000 people watched us the very first day, uh, which either means we were really good or people really have nothing else to do during the COVID <laughs> pandemic. Um, this this uh, week, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about, uh, uh, we're going to wish our fathers happy Father's Day, of course. And then we're going to talk about uh, the medical topics that we thought were really interesting this week. Um, and then we're going to meet two fantastic other physicians, Nadia Hernandez and Lilun Lee. Uh, Nadia practices in Texas and she's an anesthesiologist. And you know, there's a huge surge in cases in Texas as well. Lilun is a resident in, in training at uh, George Washington University in DC. Um, and we're gonna talk about uh, COVID. We're gonna talk about healthcare. Lilun uh, recently took care of one of the individuals injured with rubber bullets uh, at Lafayette Square on June 1st and wrote an op-ed about it in the Washington Post. And we're gonna to talk to her about that and, and really debunking some myths people feel about what seems to be harmless, but is not. So we're really looking forward to talking and answering questions and sharing some uh, ideas and some laughs, right, Marina? Well, hopefully there'll be laughs. <laughs> hopefully people laugh with us, but yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting concept, right? What people think is not, uh, it's like, oh, it's rubber bullets, not a big deal. My girlfriend, who is an ophthalmologist, came out strongly against the use of rubber bullets because if it hits you in the wrong spot, it's super painful. It's not like, okay, you guys, everyone listening should imagine if I picked up something rubber and I threw it at you, likely, if I'm not angry, likely it's not gonna hurt you. But if it's coming out of a gun, at like a certain speed and velocity and you know trajectory, it's gonna hurt. And so this is part of the issue that all these things that we think, oh, they use minor methods to quell a crowd. I don't even think the crowd needed to be quelled actually, but perhaps yeah. it did, but rubber bullets are actually not harmless. Just like a BB gun is not harmless. It's a Christmas story. You're going to shoot your eye out, right? It's a Christmas story. We already saw that. Without, without the leg lamp. Without the leg yes. lamp. 
And Radian is right. Rubber bullets do in fact have a core of metal. Uh, they are not a Nerf gun. You know, tear gas makes people cough and sputter and sneeze. And you see people pouring milk out of jugs into their eyes to stop the burning. Oh. None of this is benign. And we really have to think about crowd control, about health, about protecting the welfare uh, of our citizens um, universally. Thank you. Very, very well said. Mark says, you two are amazing and the general public knows that. Smile. And to, uh, I too believe in the impact of karma. And so that's really a nice comment from him. Uh, Stefan says, uh, Dr. Sujana and Dr. Marina, I, I make sure to let everyone know about She's On Call every week as I promote the importance of what you are doing on his Spin It Social Hour. Just did, So just today, sharing is caring. That is awesome and uh, before we let you go it's it's uh, saturday night we want to make sure that uh, you you get some rest before your show uh, radian says i don't i didn't i don't know if even bean backgrounds are safe to be honest and uh, this people is shouldn't shoot things at people like don't shoot stuff at people yeah, <laughs> it makes noise which can affect your your eardrum right mm -hmm. and uh, the firing itself and also just being pummeled with something, that's horrible. Just think, if you have siblings, think about when your sibling hurled something at you and it hurt, right? Yeah. This is worse, it's much worse. And it's painful because it's an, it's an emotional bruise. It's, it's, like a, it's like a moral bruise that somebody would do that to you. Yeah, and that's- you know, I, I have to say something, Shri. Your previous, the, the incredible uh, Jacqueline Dolly, who was on your show just now, talked about reinventing and, and redefining yourself. And I think in a way, Marina and I have chosen this time of self-reflection to sort of reinvent ourselves and think about, you know, Marina's an amazing surgeon, right? So she could just be surgering all day. Like she could just be in the operating room all day and she'd have a great life. And instead she has, she's also an incredible communicator. So I think the concept of redefining yourself, refiguring out who you are, maybe that's one of the highlights of this pause that we all took. And I think stepping back and saying something so obvious, don't shoot people with stuff, whatever that stuff is. Right? That's an obvious thing. But maybe it took us a while to step back and think before we said it and before that was heard. So I want to thank... Jacqueline, because that was an amazing, amazing program today. I'm going to have my sons who just, uh, you know, recent college graduates start listening to that again. Thank you. Let's now, just before we go, I want to ask Marina the question about your show that I know many people will be curious about. Tell us about the name and what it means. So she's on call. It was, you know, we were trying to come up with something, Sujan and I, about what could we call it? Is it women doctors talking about? And, and you know, we started thinking like, do we need to really say it's women doctors? When people see us, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, it's, it's women doctors. <laughs> well, we hope so. <laughs> and so then what was so wonderful is that we have a great team behind us and we have, you know, a series, a, an executive producer. And then Rose Horowitz um, was talking to her family and, discussing all the different you know, titles we had come up with. I said uh, med talk with Sujana and Marina and we could shorten it to S&M and that would be bad <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Like, you know, med talk is bad. And uh, anyway, so she was talking to her husband and he said, what about she's on call? And that just so resonated with both of us uh, for a variety of reasons. We have both experienced being on call, not just for our patients, but really for our families, um, our extended families, and totally rando people. Like, right, we're out and they're like, oh my God, are you a doctor? Guess what? I have this thing. Can you talk to me about it? And, you know, you have to be really careful because you're not their doctor and you have to sort of say, you should see your primary care. This is the time frame. You know, if you know, as a surgeon, people are not usually coming to me with their lab work, although, I mean, I actually do a lot of metabolic disease work, so I do see a lot of blood work and all that other stuff. But but people are coming to me with like, I have this thing, and so I was at a and one of the things that we talked about is that I was at a at a rock concert 
And after the show, I got to go backstage, which is super cool. And you're like, yeah, so I'm backstage. How cool is that? So I'm hanging out. And uh, the bass player is like, hey, what do you do? We're just chit chatting. He's like, I was at, you know, at the time of the surgery resident, I'm like, I'm a surgery resident. You know, it's not as cool as what you're doing right now. And he's like, okay, I have this thing on my back. Can you check it out? I'm like, uh, like where? He's like, look right now. He pulls up his shirt, back of his shirt. So I can look at this thing and I'm like, okay, I feel it. I, you know, check it. And I'm like, it's probably just a fatty tumor. You're okay. You don't have to worry about it on this tour. <laughs> We're good. You're good. We're good. Just, you know, like I thought it was the weirdest thing ever at the time. But the truth is, we get curbside all the time. And when we, we, stop our own medical colleagues and like curbside, you know, or if I see them, I'm like, Hey, can I curbside you about something? And we all know what that is. That's just like, want a really expert opinion without, um, you know, necessarily putting it in the chart or billing the patient, but sometimes it a curbside turns into an actual consult. But a lot of times the curbside's just like, what do you think about this? And they're like, no, you're doing the right thing. And then you're like, yes. Okay. And you move on. So um, it's just, so she's on call with something meanly talking about like how we're on call all the time. Sorry, I have a diva who likes to be on screen a lot. Oh, wait, tell her, tell us who that is. Tell us who that is. This is Friday. We found her on a Friday. Somebody tied her upside outside of our, our apartment building and uh, tied her up overnight. And um, my husband went down and the doorman were like, oh my God, there's this dog barking. And he went out to see her. They're like, can you bring her dog food? So he was going downstairs bringing dog food. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, there's a dog tied up outside. I was like, hmm, okay. We already had one dog. So I was like, uh-huh, okay. That sounds interesting. And he's like, why don't you go downstairs and look at the dog? And I was like, what do you think is going to happen? This is what happened. She's in the house. She's <laughs> right here. And she knows it. <laughs> but she just wants some attention right now. I'm so sorry. It's late. So she's probably like, hey, I need to go for a walk. Um, you guys all know, everybody watching, if you have pets, if you have kids, if you have anything, they're all like, everybody demands your time at certain times, and this is just one of those times. Well, it's clearly you're on call <laughs> with the dog, <laughs> with the dog as well. Uh, Rodman says, I love people who are well, well reversed in sciences and technology who are also great communicators. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's really nice. And Radian is also quoting you. Can you check this thing out on my back? <laughs> it's like comparing the scars seen in Jaws, which premiered in theaters 45 years ago today. Wow, wow. look at Radian making wow. those connections. I like that's that. Cool. That's uh, cool. Who didn't see Jaws back then? I was scared. <laughs> oh my God, so scared when I saw you that. You weren't born 45 years ago. What are you talking about? Wait, was it 45 years? No, was it 45 years ago? Yeah, maybe. I think wow. I saw I was definitely born. <laughs> Rahatian <laughs> says, great. I'm going to jump out. Thank God it's Friday from the disco era. Boy, am I old. Uh, <laughs> Stefan says, oh, my God, Friday is so sweet. She looks like such a special rescue, such a lucky pup to have you. Uh, she, can you ship she, her to North Carolina? I miss having pets. <laughs> I need to get a pet and soon. That pup is so lucky. That's, that's uh, me. Okay, so because you're smiling and all of this, I'm now going to bring you down by playing a clip that I know surgeons don't like. We're going to play a clip to just hear your thoughts on what it's, you know, this is the stereotype of surgeons that became popular after a movie that I loved that oh, I know you guys didn't care You know about. what you're going to say. Yeah, we know, you know what I'm going to play here right now. So I want to hear from you what it's like uh, when people think this is what doctors are like. This is what surgeons are like. Surgeons are a special breed of folks who are full of themselves. Right. Well, Three. Too, too well, serious. Ethan and I are surgeons, so we we're we're ready for you. Let's. All let's, right. Let's do this. Let's, yeah. it's, it's a short clip. Okay. Here we go. I think now you're vastly overstating. Is that why you didn't give Doctor Hill the job? There were a number of other factors. By the way, this is worth watching just for a beautiful young Alec Baldwin, who's about to show up on camera. The case is here. He's being accused of having a God complex. And so that's what you're so about to say. Is that why you removed a healthy ovary without any scientific diagnosis? Don't you address my client, Mr. Ryman. Do you have a God complex? This is not acceptable. No, no, let him address me. Jen? No, no, it's about time I got to give some answers here. Stop typing. This is off the record. The question is, do I have a God complex? Dr. Kessler says yes which makes me wonder if this lawyer has any idea as to the kind of
Shri, I'm missing the punchline. I think he says, I don't have a God complex. I am God. Ah. And, you know, in a way, when you think about what patients do when they come Dennis, to every doctor. And you go to your church and with any luck, you might win the annual raffle. But if you're looking for God, he was in operating room number two on November 17th. And he doesn't like to be second guessed. You ask me if I have a God complex. Let me tell you something. I am God. This side show is over. It's outrageous. And I don't think any one of our colleagues really feels like that. There are times, you know, what we've said before on our show is that we are, and, and when we've been on your show, with the start of COVID, when it wasn't operating, um, I was lost. I, I started operating again, thank God, because now I'm found. Thank yourself, you mean. No, <laughs> and, uh, I thank my team. My team is what makes, you know, does God have a team? You know, that made it sound like it's so one person and it's not. In the end, a lot of times, especially in legal reviews and stuff like that, of things that you've done or you've decided, everybody tries to make it that you're the one person who made all the decisions or you know, direct trajectory, which is not always the case. Um, we work with a team who makes our lives so easy. It's such a pleasure to go to work. Uh, I would say that one thing that Sujin and I share above all is that we enjoy every day. I enjoy when I see my patients in the office. I enjoy when I am operating. I enjoy seeing my colleagues. That's a true blessing. That is, you know, when people say it's a calling, I don't know. I'm just happy that I enjoy what I do every day and that I can make a difference in so many people. To say that any one of us think we're God, that's just an outrageous depiction of what maybe 40, 50 years ago, you, you, know, you were a doctor, no one questioned you. Hello, there's Dr. Google now. We are questioned all the time. This is like, hey, you know, I read this, th there was a study and I'm like, I read that study too and I'm telling you that's not the thing, right? So there are a lot of different factors now. And I think that when patients have the option and there's health grades, there's, oh gosh, so you, what is it? Some of the other ones, vital, vital something, yeah, vital okay. sign or whatever. There's a bunch of different ones that grade you based on patient evaluations. You know, even Yelp. Yelp is grading me. I'm not even on Yelp. Like, okay, <laughs> Yelp just graded me, right? It's, it's really about how you communicate, what you're sharing with your patients and how they feel after they're um, meeting with you. And in terms of, for me, sometimes that's good and bad. Sometimes they don't necessarily get the message that I'm trying to give them and other times they do. It, it's really about communication. And I think that this is an era of personalized medicine in terms of, you know, not every patient would a, you know, I do a lot of weight loss surgery or weight loss medicine. Not every patient with a BMI of 30 or a BMI of 35 or 40 is going to need the same thing. We have to look really at the individual and kind of streamline or stratify the approach to them so that we can best treat them. And that's something that that clip totally misses. That clip just says, I made a decision. No, you have to take a lot of factors into account. And I would say all my colleagues, male and female, do the very same thing when they're assessing their patients. All right. Well, that, thank you for that. Mark says, aren't all surgeons like House, the character from House, that is? And Roger he says, a He's not, a surgeon. Like, not all surgeons are like Dr. Mark Craig from St. Elsewhere. Many of my late mother's surgeon colleagues were warm, kind, empathetic people, in addition to being very good at their job. So I think I think the best TV portrayal of, of doctors, of physicians and surgeons was on Scrubs. I think that they <laughs> that was right on point. That showed our our weaknesses, our strengths, our teamwork, everything. That's and we were adorable. I, I used to get so mad at all medical shows. Like I was banned from watching ER. Yes. Because I'd be like that's inaccurate. That is not what's happening when people get intubated. That's ridiculous. I get so fired up that I couldn't go to sleep. So like, no more. Like, look, look at what Radian says. Gregory House would be in jail in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe. Every time we watched House, I'd, I'd have a litany of everything that was going wrong. And uh, finally, I was told to either shut up or leave the room. You know what's funny <laughs> is uh, there was that show um, based out of the Hamptons. I can't think of the name. Oh, Royal Pains. Royal Pains. Okay. So <laughs> almost 90% of the time, I'd be watching the show. We'd watch it. You know, we're, we're, we're a healthcare family. And I'd be like, oh, okay, there's a parrot. Psittacosis. This is it was like a great, like going back into what you learned in med school. Like, this is it. This is what I know what this is. You know, so it was, just, it was a funny, funny thing. But I was wrong sometimes. And when I was wrong, everyone's so happy. But it was like 70 to 80% of the time I was right. So those few times they were all like, hmm, you know, you didn't get that one. I'm like, yeah, yeah, put it in the 20% pile. Vandana, our producer, says love scrubs, so that's pretty cool. All right, we've got to let you folks go, get ready for the show tomorrow. Remind us again the time, what they're going to see, who's going to be the guest on. So, Sujana, we'll start with you talking. So, uh, she's on call, and uh, your hosts are Marina Korean and me, Sujana Chandrasekhar, and our guest will be Dr. Nadia Hernandez, who's an anesthesiologist in, in Texas, and Dr. Lee Lun Lee, who is an ENT resident at George Washington University in Washington, DC. And we're on from 11 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern time tomorrow. And we're really looking forward to having the show and uh, meeting our guests and answering your questions. And everyone can watch on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube, please join at She's On Call. Please search right now. Please tweet using the hashtag She's On Call. And please join us 11 a.m. to noon Sundays starting tomorrow. Tomorrow is the second episode, and you can go back and see the first episode last week. What's one thing you learned last week that you're going to apply to doing this stuff tomorrow? Marina, we'll start with you. Wow, you could have warned me about that one. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> you know what? I think it's interesting that um, I, I've had some experience doing some shows before, but it's really about making uh, things flow and connect and making sure that your guests are really engaged and that you, um, you know, when they bring up certain topics that you really want to kind of hone in on certain interesting things that they say. So it's really about creating the flow and the trajectory and also super important is looking for our viewers questions and trying to answer them because i think that is so important if you guys are watching and you have questions we are here really truly to answer them um i love to think that i ask that every man or every woman question because some you know when it's like other people's specialties i'm like why do you guys do this what does this mean you know but I, i'd love to also see that our viewers are engaged and that we love to answer your questions so please tune in tomorrow and then definitely you know chime in with all questions and again it's like facebook live at she's on call it's also going to be on uh, my facebook which is at marina Curian. and so it's on your facebook as well or yeah it's gonna be on my facebook it's gonna be on the she's on call facebook page and I just learned this week that you can set a reminder. So if you go to at She's On Call on Facebook, um, you can actually set a reminder and it'll tell you at 11 o'clock to watch. So watch. That's great. And uh, Vandana says, I remember when Meredith Gray dropped an organ on the floor in Gray's Anatomy. Well, we're not gonna talk about uh, medical disasters <laughs> right now. Jacqueline Dolly has several questions. She was She's still watching. That's incredible after sharing an hour with us. Awesome, I love you, Jacqueline Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I'll be tuning in because I have so many questions. I'm so glad this show is happening. And uh, Radian has a new show coming out, Dr. Korean Medical Detective, launching this fall, so. Yes. You know what? That's what I always say. How do you know this? But, oh, because I'm like, you know what we doctors are. We're like detectives. You tell us the little we things. Are. Like, oh, did this happen? Did this happen? Yes. Now we know. We're getting a picture picture. So it's it's uh, that's so funny that you say that because I do think I'm a detective. <laughs> but, you know, I, I always wanted to be. Like, you are not a detective. Like, yes, no. I'm not. <laughs> but I always wanted to be a detective. I grew up reading Encyclopedia Brown. I love Encyclopedia Brown. Yeah, oh my God, Encyclopedia Brown. And so I was like, oh, how can I be a detective and still sort of eat? And I was like, oh, I could be a doctor. Doctor <laughs> <laughs> detective. 
<laughs> like, make it up to eat. You know, we were going to be detective detectives. Did you know that? You didn't know. I didn't know that. No. So here's my Detective Brown's uh, Encyclopedia Brown story. I, I'm fresh off the boat, nine years old, PS6, 1980. And the teacher says in the class, the librarian says, we have lots of encyclopedias here, including Encyclopedia Britannica. And then I raise my hand. No one asked any question. And I raised my hand and said, I've never heard of that, but I've read Encyclopedia Brown. And it was such an embarrassing moment. The whole class was, oh my, they all start booing because they know Encyclopedia Brown, not popular outside of America, but is a detective story about a young 10 year old detective. I read it. I read it at this, I mean, you're yeah. younger, but I read it. I read it here. No, no, I know. That's what I'm saying. In America's part, no, what I'm saying is, oh, well, he, she was talking about real encyclopedias. This kid is called Encyclopedia Brown. I thought uh, Encyclopedia <laughs> Brown was like, it was the whole thing was a mess. So it was- I love it. It's the greatest. Really, really embarrassing moment from my childhood that I'm And you about. and I have uh, matching elementary school pictures, apparently, Shri, you <laughs> and I. Yes, of course. <laughs> so it was all good. Yeah. Uh, um, Radian says, you need a cool theme song, maybe a saxophone bass like Cagney and Lacey for Aww. the show. Radian loves and Brown. Great. And Jonathan said Sherlock Holmes was based on a doctor. There yes, go. on a neurologist, on his neurology professor. And uh, mm -hmm. Mark has already set that reminder. And so Stefan says, you are absolutely amazing. And uh, Jacqueline says, love you back. Thank you. I'll be tuning into your show tomorrow. It's filling a huge knowledge gap. So thank you. And Jacqueline and everybody, please tell your friends about this show. It's great to have so many different voices on the air and to have women doctors featured. They won't always be women doctors they interview, but the fact is that you're seeing diverse faces, voices, ideas, names, countries, backgrounds, all of that is what makes this show special. And we want everybody to join. And I'm honored to be an executive producer with these two ladies, three executive producers working together on this show. And we'll see you all on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Our show at the Read Along is at 8.30. Tom Jolly will be here, the print editor of the New York Times. And then we will take a break and then we'll go right to work to put these two awesome doctors and make them shine on this platform. Uh, we'll let you folks go. I still have to read the names of uh, the victims of police brutality uh, that we promised to read as long as the protests are on. We want to thank you both for your support of this show and congratulations on the launch of your new lives as uh, TV detective doctors. How about that? We'll, yeah, we'll play around with that. I want to just give a shout out to all the he for she because, you know, both Sujin and I had very strong male mentors uh, to get where we are, uh, as well as female mentors. And honestly, to put this show together, uh, Sri came to us and said, well, why don't we do the show? And so <laughs> that was a total he for she moment. Yes, it was. Uh, and, um, you know, so that, that this is not, yes, it's she's on call, but we're so going to have our colleagues on and the best colleagues to, to reach uh, the people that are watching. And they're going to be either women, they're going to be men, whatever it is, they're going to be our colleagues. And that's uh, what's important. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good night, ladies. We'll see you Thank tomorrow. You so much. Thank see you tomorrow. You. Bye bye. Bye. And please, everybody, please tune in and uh, uh, see them tomorrow as we get started. Uh, we are going to, just before we leave, we're going to say uh, their names as we do on this show every day. And uh, let's do that right now. Um, it's been a long, long three months. And uh, the economic pain, the healthcare pain, now accentuated by the pain of the attention that's being paid, but also. What is coming out of it, I think there are hopeful signs uh, that there will be more attention being paid to the racial inequalities of this country. Let's say their names based on this incredible photograph of a young George Floyd with his mother, Larsenia. He would die two years almost to the day. He would be killed almost two years to the day after she died and be buried next to her. That's a painting by Titus Kaffer the cover of Time magazine, and you can see it's based on that picture and just heartbreaking to see. Let us now say their names. Trayvon Martin, Yvette Smith, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, Laquan McDonald, 
Tanisha Anderson, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Jerame Reed, Natasha McKenna, Eric Harris, Walter Scott, Freddie Gray, Michael Chapman, Sandra Bland, Darius Stewart, Samuel DuBose, Janet Wilson, Kaylin Rockmore, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Joseph Mann, Terence Crutcher, Chad Robertson, Jordan Edwards, Aaron Bailey, Stefan Clark, Danny Ray Thomas, Antoine Rose, Botham Jean, Tatiana Jefferson, Michael Dean, Ahmad Arbery, Brianna Taylor, and George Floyd. To that list, we must add names like Rashard Brooks, who was killed just last weekend and shot and killed uh, while having that interaction with the police. 30 minutes, not instant reaction, no weapons on him, except a taser that he took in the struggle. And you know the rest of that story. Thank you everybody for joining us. It's been 101 episodes. We're very grateful to you for being here, for being part of this story and this journey that we have had. We wanna thank our sponsors, Art & Co. Get involved with the world's largest online art auction, fundraising for COVID-19 victims, artandco.net, artandco.net. Thank you also to Rutgers Global Entrepreneurship Experience.org. Get 20% off a virtual team camp by using the code SRE. S-R-E-E, globalentrepreneurshipexperience.org. And finally, many thanks to Muckrack for giving us the resources to be able to create this free Fundamentals of Social Media course, free certification course. It's already launched, mrac.co slash social. 4,000 people have signed up, mrac.co slash social. And with that, we'll thank you very much for being here. We have two great shows tomorrow, actually three great shows. 8.30 a.m. New York Times read along, Father's Day edition with Tom Jolly, print editor of the New York Times. At 11, we have She's On Call with Dr. Sujana Chandrasekhar and Dr. Marina Kurian. Their guests are Dr. Nadia Hernandez and Dr. Lilun Lee. Dr. Lee wrote that incredible Washington Post op-ed about rubber bullets and their impact. And then at night, it's our Father's Day positivity show and our 102nd episode, my 17-year-old twins will be my guest. They will discuss today's America and the state of the planet from their point of view. They only agreed to do this because it's Father's Day. And on Father's Day, we are offering this wonderful chance to celebrate a father figure in your life, grandfather, uncle, male role model, father, anyone you like, you just make a contribution and we get your picture and a message that you'd like us to read on the air go to digimentors.link slash father's day digimentors.link slash father's day or just email me sri at sri.net we'll send you the link we'll send you the information 50 percent of the proceeds go to charity that's digimentors.link slash father's day thanks very much everybody we're saying to say good night bye bye